Okay, just a short video today featuring one of my favourite things, Nixie Tubes. I bought a couple of new devices that use these. I just wanted to show them to you. The last time I featured a watch that had Nixie Tubes in it was in April 2016. It's a two-digit watch, and over the years, quite a few people have asked me, how do these things display the time? Well, it displays it by showing the digits one after the other, so that's 1136. They do that because, of course, it makes them smaller. However, I've been looking at Nixie Tubes, as I often do, do, and this is looking at an Etsy page here, and I spotted that quite a few people are doing four-digit Nixie watches now, so I thought I'll have to pick one of those up. So I bought this one through eBay. It was made by a chap over in Russia, and of course these aren't mass production things, as I've mentioned before with Nixie Tubes. These are just private individuals putting these things together themselves. It's not like a big factory, so let's just have a look at this, although I've got to say that you probably won't be able to buy this exact model. Uh, I'll show you what that is later on, but notice it's got a micro USB port in the back and it was thoughtful enough to include a micro USB charger to plug into that although it's got a euro plug on it so I'll just use my own but that one was from Samsung anyway let's have a look at the watch itself nicely wrapped up and I picked this particular one because when I looked at the various models well it was the cheapest for one thing but also it was kind of the neatest it wasn't overly complicated some of them were trying to look a bit too steampunk whereas this one just looks nice and smart now let's just have a look at how it works press the middle button we get the time on so that's 1625 i've set it to 24 hour mode but of course you can use 12 hour if you wish press the top button you get the date 13th of october 2017 press the bottom button you get the battery charge level which is 99 percent followed by the temperature 19 degrees centigrade now i'll just talk you through the settings on this there are quite a few it's probably unlikely you're going to get one of these but i just want to show you what it can do so first off 24 hour or 12 hour mode so you press the middle button to advance through the various settings and as you can see the digits light up brighter depending on what part it's adjusting so this is the month you see on the right hand side lit up and then it will move across to the date on the left there now the next setting is zero or one and you'll set it to one if you want to activate the tilt operation so when you twist your wrist the display automatically shows you set the watch at a certain angle and then turn it to number one and it will remember that angle to be activated next time i'm in the next setting now this is the brightness for the display one to seven for the brightness of the tubes the next one along is to do with the colors at the top of the display you see there we've got rgb leds now you can switch them all off like i've got here with three zeros but by changing the individual numbers the first one does the red the second one does the green and then the third one does the blue so you can adjust those from one to eight and by mixing them you can choose what color you want to display but again, of course, a lot of people prefer to switch off LEDs on Nixie displays. I understand that. And of course, you can do that, as I mentioned before. But I'm going to put it to 880. It gives me this kind of orangey effect. So moving on to the next setting now, this is how long the display is going to stay on. The first one, I think, is the time. And then the second one is the date. So you select how many seconds you want the time to display when you press that button or tilt your wrist and then move on and do the same thing to choose how long you want the display for the date and year at the top now if you find the watch to be running fast or slow you've got a selection here where you can do a plus or minus up to 29 seconds per day to match the accurate time this next one is the temperature if you think the temperature is a bit out you can adjust it to be the exact right temperature for the room to start with and then finally we've got this number six which we can change to a zero if we don't want the animation when the display comes on so i'll show you what that looks like without the animation which is just like that the time just pops up and then i'll turn the animation back on again because i prefer it. it's kind of like a fruit machine type thing and that's what it looks like with it showing so there you go that's pretty much everything it does now as far as charging it goes well those two things on the left aren't buttons they're actually charging points they sit on the cradle which has been plugged into a usb port now and you've got to balance it just right but you can see the white led comes on in the background there to show that the watch is charging of course my normal watch isn't a particularly small watch i do have a collection of unusual watches i like this one this is what i wear most of all um, this one is a little bit bigger but i did wear it out of the house the other day just to see what it felt like walking around and things and i'd forgotten i got it on and i meant to show it to a few people that i met while i was out and i'd forgot completely by the time i came home I was, oh yeah i had that watch and i was going to show them so it shows you can kind of forget about it but really it doesn't particularly fit well under a shirt i think it's 
best with a short sleeve shirt. Anyway, here's some watches I've shown on videos in the past, just to give you a comparison on the different sizes. Comparing the two digit watch to the Seiko, you can see there's not much difference in size. The two digit one is quite a bit thicker, of course, but the four digit seems quite a lot larger. However, when you compare the four digit against the two digit, they've done quite a good job of shrinking it to its minimum size. You can see there's the two digit on top and there isn't much difference in width. They've got the same depth in them as well. So I think it's a, a pretty neat job, this, of getting four tubes into a watch, something that I didn't think I'd ever see. So there you go, that was the Nixie Tube watch. There's a few different versions around on Etsy and on eBay. They tend to be a little bit fussier though with text and things on them, but because the people make these to order, I think you could perhaps get in touch with them and say, can I have one without all the writing on, or perhaps get your name on it or something. And they are quite a bit more expensive than the one I got, although the one I bought, the chap seems to have only made the one so far, so I can't really direct you towards him. Anyway, moving on to the next item, and it's a Nixie stopwatch. I often need to show stopwatches in videos just to demonstrate how long something's taking. And in this video of the Bacon Express, I use my iPad, but I always thought it'd be nice to have something that used Nixie tubes. So I've been searching for a Nixie stopwatch for years and I've finally found one. This model here, the DS35, is from Pregotron, which is a Czechoslovakian company and they made a lot of industrial type clocks. And of course, this particular model will be for industry or a lab somewhere. It would have been quite expensive probably back in the day. And I didn't realize until I bought this, I had an untapped ability to read written Czechoslovakian. See how you get on with these. We've got minity, secondy, and millisecondy. And the thing itself is very well made. It's metal, it's quite heavy, it's got this adjustable stand, which is great for me when I'm shooting it with a camera, getting it angled exactly how I want to avoid reflections and things. You can see on the back here, it runs on 220 volts at 50 hertz. It's mains powered only. The earth pin is missing out of the plug. I'll need to rewire that soon, but at the moment, to get it up and running for this video, I'm just going to plug it into this adapter here. Now, the important thing is if you do see one of these for sale and you want to buy it, make sure it has the part that plugs in there. It's essential because those are the buttons that operate it. There are no buttons on the device itself. It looks like it's made out of Bakelite or something, this. We've got two buttons. We've got a rocker switch for start and stop, which has a really nice click to it. And then on the right, we've got a temporary switch, which we just press down to reset it. Now, I suppose you could fashion one of these yourself if you knew what you were doing. It's after all only a six pin plug on the end, which will connect the various pins together to operate the device. But uh, I'm glad mine came with it anyway. So I've plugged it in now. It all starts at zero. I'll start it going. You can see there the milliseconds flashing away at the end. All the digits work fine on this, which is uh, very important, of course, and it's very responsive as well to that button there. It's nice to have a separate remote control. It means I can operate it off camera. And of course, the reset works as well. It doesn't do laps or any of that kind of stuff. It's just quite a simple device. In fact, there's not an awful lot more to say about it. It's a stopwatch. It works. It will go up to 99 minutes, presumably, and 59.99 seconds or something so ne nearly 100 minutes i'm guessing i haven't really tried it that long but everything else seems to be working fine now one person asked me to show the milliseconds at the end there with a high speed video recording so i could slow it down to show what was going on with the filaments well i'm going to show that but i'll warn you it does get quite flashy on screen so if you're a person that's affected by flashes look away now because it's just going to get worse but here we go i've shot it with my camera super slow motion you can see that's the milliseconds that's how it operates so it does go through all the digits one after the other working fine there so there you go that was a look at a vintage digitalani stop key or digital stop clock apologies to the czech viewers for the pronunciation there but i was never sure that a company had ever brought out a nixie based stop clock so i was so happy when i found this one even happier to find it worked perfectly and i've already used it in a couple of videos i've been shooting this week now if you're interested in trying to buy either of the items i've shown you here today for yourself on eBay well I'll have some links in the video description which will do the appropriate searches for you but I've got to say these are quite unusual or rare items so there might be nothing there and also the watches well the one I got was a one-off so you've got to be looking at alternatives but that's it for the moment as always thanks for watching